one of this. Good morning. So uh, one of the things that I'd like to mention as a journalist and as a recent graduate with an MFT uh, master's is that, you know, Marilyn Monroe and an, uh, a great producer of a movie um, suiciding or uh, committing suicide and a kid in South LA committing suicide is no different than any other. They're all human beings. And one of the key things that uh, as a reporter that I've seen that no matter where I go to cover a suicide or homicide, um, it affects us all. And when um, you mentioned, sorry, Anara. Anara mentioned the fact that we know how high the bridge uh, in San Pedro is now, that's also a call to opportunity for somebody in mental health to call a newsroom and say, hey, um, we heard about this morning there's this big story about somebody famous committing suicide. Would you have space for one inch for a phone number to put at the end of that story? So I know that um, a lot of uh, clinicians say like, oh, that's such a bad report. Oh, that's such a bad story. Do you see that? But what did you contribute as a member of a clinical mental health society to make it a better story? Because at the end of the day, somebody committing suicide, taking a life, uh, taking their own life, tells us about the society we live in. There's something missing there that it's letting it happen. And to say, well, they're not getting informed. Well, they're not visiting our website. So sometimes we have to kind of push the number towards the newsroom. Sometimes we'll have to make the phone call, not just to have a reaction of why this guy who jumped off the bridge committed suicide. Just because he's famous, should, he shouldn't get the time to make it on a newspaper. Well, you know, kids in South LA, kids in San Fernando Valley, Pacoima, Silmar, are also committing suicide. So I think first we have to understand that uh, I'm here to invite you to be at the level that we all are as a society. Reporters are no bigger than clinicians, and together we're bigger to prevent suicide. And the best thing about um, what we do in news, and now that's an MFT with the masters, we're going to start implementing in the newsroom, in Univision, the number one station in the nation, no matter what time you see it, at, um, no matter what language, at 6 p.m., we're going to start adding that special, uh, we call it bug, like if it's a mental health story, we will have the 800 number there of whatever that pertains to. We are aware of what media overall, we, what we do lack. And, um, but also, it's also an invitation is of, of, okay, what is it that we're pushing forward towards the media so they don't make that mistake? And I would not call it a mistake. It's just kind of when news happens, everyone, we have a saying in the newsroom is running with their head cut off. First of all, if we're running with our heads cut off, and if it's a big story about suicide, I would welcome any of you to call in and put my head back on to, to, to be focused on what it needs to be done. And usually it's, well, it's too late. We are a very reactionary society. So what do we do now? So what do we do before that? I think one death, no matter what's your status in society, is too much. Uh, it's a dream, it's a teenager. It's a dream be beginning to develop. And to not give that student, that teenager, that young adult the opportunity to overpass whatever factor they're feeling, it's a loss to everyone. It is probably not our son. It is probably not our cousin. It is probably not our husband. But it's a member of our community. And like it or not, your child who didn't commit suicide will be affected by knowing that his classmate who didn't make it that morning to sit by him committed suicide. It is your loss when you are driving to work and you realize that your kid is asking you questions about, so why did your friend's dad committed suicide? So as you see, at the end of the world, at the end of the day, we're a community in which, yes, uh, we have responsibilities as journalists, and yes, we want to be accurate Accuracy is one of our ethics, just as clinicians is non-maleficence. And we put those two together. We will be non-maleficence, and you will make us accurate. So do not be afraid to pick up the phone and just call in. I know all of you make good friends. You have your favorite reporters. You have your favorite editors. I know you guys do. So take advantage of those. You know, we call uh, something uh, 
something that we do in the newsroom at police beat. We usually, I pick up the phone and you know talk to the Sergeant Franco. Hey, Sergeant, so what's going on? What's cooking? Oh, we're gonna do this right here, and you know we got some marijuana over here, and blah blah blah. You can also pick up the phone and say, you know what? You might not know this child, but he goes to Garfield High School, and he committed suicide yesterday. Oh, we don't cover suicides. Well, this is the third one in a week in that area. So you get them interested of what's going on behind that suicide. Suicide in itself is something that within Hispanics, uh, unfortunately, as being a journalist in, for 17 years within the Hispanic community, we have the greatest resource to prevent suicide, which is network support, but yet stigma and taboo takes them away. We don't talk about it, even though 15 members, I'm the 11th child of my family, the youngest. And there were things you just don't talk about. You just, there's things you never talk about your mom dying. You never talk about buying a, a tombstone or a, a piece of, uh, of, of property where you're going to be buried because then you're wishing death upon you. So those kind of things, as, as, as Hispanics and a minority, push us away from the reality that we need to encounter one day. So how do you guys make the change? Education, reaching out. And if we can hit 800,000 people at 6 p.m., that little number that Anar was mentioning that would make such a difference, it's simply made by a phone call to us. And making the story of that suicide important to you and we'll believe it because you took the time to make the phone call. You don't have to call. When the guy jumped off the building, um, the, the, the producer, nobody had to call us to cover it. You guys knew we would cover it, right? Mental health, you were expecting a call to get a, somebody to talk about suicide prevention. That's, those mechanisms are already in our society. So I would invite you. I'm going to give my, as many cards as I have. I'm going to start next month a bi week by monthly segment in which I will take recommendations of what's affecting your community and that will be the story of the week. I will give you the power to inform, I will give you the power to prevent, I will give you the power to initiate those mechanisms so that as a community we take responsibility for a loss or for a prevention.